Hey team, today's topic, I wanted to go over the differences between aerobic threshold versus anaerobic threshold. There are uh, definitely differences between these two. The aerobic threshold is basically the intensity uh, that you need when you're training in order to produce an adaptation. So, and that adaptation is to improve your, your VO2 max or also your, which is also called your aerobic capacity. When you're running at your aerobic threshold, that's basically the point where your, your anaerobic system starts to contribute to a higher level in terms of your energy production. So it's, it's not, you're running at an intensity that's going to challenge you. It's not running at such an easy aerobic effort that you're not really getting an adaptation at all. You know, if you're out just jogging or, or running recovery, that's not running necessarily at aerobic threshold. When you're running at aerobic threshold, you're running at a elevated heart rate, uh, basically running around uh, 65 to around 70% of your maximum heart rate. Whereas anaerobic threshold is the point when you're running, when we run at intensities that are at such an extent that we can't clear the lactic acid faster than it's building up. So it's much more difficult, much more labored to run at your anaerobic threshold versus running at your aerobic threshold. Your anaerobic threshold is also termed onset of blood lactate accumulation or your maximum lactate steady state effort. So when I talk about doing threshold runs versus um, aerobic runs, you know, when you're running aerobically and very easily, that should just be, you know, you're running very low percentage, about 60% of your max heart rate versus when you're running at your aerobic threshold, when you're running around 65 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. When you're training at anaerobic threshold effort or your lactate threshold, you're running closer to around 85 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. So you're gonna be much more challenged running at your anaerobic threshold versus running at your aerobic threshold. And again, aerobic threshold is the point where your body starts to build up lactic acid at a higher level. So you are challenged as it does help you to contribute to your body's ability to start teaching itself to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up. And especially when you're training at your anaerobic threshold or your lactate threshold, that's the point where you know we really start to uh, challenge the energy systems of the body and you teach the body to improve its lactate tolerance so you're able to sustain that goal race pace that you're aiming for whether it's on the track or on the roads more effectively and again a lot of times athletes that have problems pacing in races it's not so much that you don't have the capability to run the times you're aiming for it's just a lot of times we and including myself because a lot of times earlier in my career i wanted to run very fast on the track and on the roads times that I was aiming for, but I just was not in the proper aerobic as well as anaerobic conditioning in order to run those types of times. So anaerobic threshold training as well as aerobic threshold training are going to challenge you both physically as well as mentally, especially at anaerobic threshold effort. Uh, because again, you're running at an even higher heart max heart rate versus running at aerobic threshold just to make, make sure that you're, you're understanding the differences between aerobic threshold and anaerobic threshold. You know, that a lot of these, a lot of times these athletes, a lot of times athletes get those particular two types of training mixed up. You know, when you're training at your aerobic threshold, you know, that particular threshold, you can basically run, go out and run for about three hours, you know, two to three hours. Your anaerobic threshold or your ventilatory threshold is basically the intensity that you can go out and run for about 60 minutes at. So I hope that uh, that helps you to understand the differences between aerobic threshold versus anaerobic threshold training. And again, these types of intensities, these types of workouts, um, you know, whether it be like a fartlek workout where you're running at your a mixture of your aerobic threshold and your anaerobic threshold or you're running at VO2 max effort where you're running 95 to about 100 percent of your max heart rate on the track these types of intensities are going to help your body to adapt your body to clear lactic acid faster than it's building up and improve your body's lactate tolerance so that again you're able to sustain race pace throughout the race and not just a portion of your race you know that's the goal here we want to make sure that 
um, we get that goal race pace that we're aiming for to feel easier for us as athletes. And the truth is there's nothing easy about doing this. It's just, uh, it's, you have to be patient with yourself. You have to know that <clears throat> you're gonna have to give yourself about three weeks to about a month to adapt to any stress place on your body. So if the athlete that's out there trying to break three hours for the marathon, <laughs> running at aerobic threshold might mean running around 710 to 715 mile pace. Uh, whereas running at your anaerobic threshold might mean running around 625 to 630 mile pace. So again, your your anaerobic threshold is going to be much more uh, aggressive versus running at your aerobic threshold. But you're still running at your aerobic threshold. You're going to be able to sustain a, a pace and effort for a much longer period of time versus running at your anaerobic threshold or your also known as your th lactate threshold, where you're running for you know closer to about 45 minutes to an hour uh, that at that <clears throat> in duration. So again, these types, the differences between aerobic threshold versus anaerobic threshold is again your your aerobic threshold is the intensity that you would be about you would be able to hold for about two to three hours versus the anaerobic threshold, which is the intensity that you would basically be able to go out and hold if you're in great shape, up to about an hour, about 60, 45 minutes to 60 minutes of intensity, you would be able to go out and hold. So again, the, 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 the goal here is to improve the body's lactate tolerance. And remember, running at your aerobic threshold is running around 65 to about 70% of your max heart rate. Okay, when you're running at your anaerobic threshold, you're running closer to around 85 to 90 percent of your maximum heart rate and when you're running at vo2 max effort which is basically close to all out efforts you're running into around 95 to 100 percent of your max heart rate so i hope this video on the differences between aerobic threshold versus anaerobic threshold is helpful for you in understanding the the differences in intensity between these particular two types of workout intensities that are both very critical for us as middle to long distance runners to get right. You don't want to spend too much time running at aerobic threshold because again if you're just running at these particular intensities or just running at your aerobic effort for too often throughout your work throughout your training week it's just going to make you a very strong long slow distance runner. So you do want to make sure that you're training at VO2 max effort once per week, you're running at anaerobic threshold effort or your lactate threshold at least once per week. Sometimes athletes, depending on the uh, overall fitness of the athlete, uh, the fitter you are, you might want to you know, introduce some double threshold training workouts every other week or even if you're in, if, or if you're in phenomenal aerobic shape and anaerobic shape and you've spent several weeks into your buildup, um, you may want to consider start doing double threshold training workouts every week. I would recommend every other week for sure. And then as you build into your fitness, if somebody's trying to, you know, if somebody's in um, the ability to go out and can go out and run a, a, or preparing for a, a half marathon under an hour and 15 minutes or somebody trying to break 230 for the half marathon or maybe somebody that's trying to break 40 minutes for 10K, I think that double threshold training workouts uh, implementing those may be what you need in order to make that next jump in your training. So consider that. Um, and again, if, uh, if you have any other questions regarding aerobic threshold training versus anaerobic threshold training, feel free to leave me a comment below this video. Uh, definitely check out the resources below these videos as well. They're definitely there to help you in your training and your racing preparation. And I hope this was helpful. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. I will definitely reach back out to you. Hit that subscribe and, and the bell icon so when I make new videos, you'll be notified of it if you are new to the channel. And uh, I will talk to you guys and gals all in the next video. Thanks, Thanks for watching.